God. You would think, you know, the more you do booktube, the less you drop every book to the floor, but it's not true. I have not become any more talented at holding up stacks of books. But you know, at least I haven't gotten less talented. Everybody and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name's Leora and I talk on here about books, writing and sometimes other stuff as well. I'm so happy you're here today because this is a very exciting video. It's something I've talked about at length but I haven't really filmed yet and it's just really nice to be actually filming it right now. I've been really getting into cozy fantasy this last half year I would say. I think I started over the summer um, but it is definitely a genre that is really nice to read during the winter and during like the colder months to cozy up a little bit. I know that we're almost nearing spring already now, which is uh, so excited. And then I can be my cottagecore girly self again. <laughs> but I also really, really, really enjoy the colder months and especially reading like cozy fantasy. I recently made like a winter fantasy video where I talked about like books I wanted to read during the winter that fall in that fantasy category. That video did really well. Thank you so much. It was amazing. Then a lot of people said that they definitely were excited to hear my cozy fantasy recommendations. So there's both books on here that I've already read and really enjoyed and that I would categorize as cozy fantasy or sci-fi maybe even. There's one sci-fi book. There's also a bunch of books that I really want to read that I think would be really good cozy fantasy. There's some on here that are very well known and there's some on here that are a bit more like well, I wouldn't say obscure, but they're just a little bit less known. So let's just get right into it. I'm really excited. This one, we've all heard about. We've all heard me talk about it. Well, I mean, if you watch the channel. Otherwise, hi, welcome. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just if you make a video about cozy fantasy, you have to mention legends and lattes. And if you don't, they'll send you to booktube prison. So, you know, and I don't want to go there. I'm sorry, I'm not funny, I know. This is a book that loads of people have talked about on booktube, on the internet. It's very popular right now, and it's one of my favorites as well. It's just a cozy fantasy that was so silly and so much fun, and I think it's perfect for this list, and I had to mention it. There's also going to be a part two. I think it's called Book... Bookstores and Bone Dust? I don't remember. I'm just so excited about it. Okay, so it's about Viv the Orc and she's an assassin. She's been an assassin for a while. She's really good at what she does, but honestly, she wants a little bit more from life. Like she wants a different vocation, you know, like a different challenge. One day she decides she's going to put her sword down and she's going to try and start a nice coffee shop in this big fantasy city called Thune. All the fantasy creatures in the city have never heard of coffee. Everybody's like flabbergasted about like what Viv is trying to do. They're like, what? Bean soup? Why would I want bean water? I don't get it. She makes sure that everybody gets to know the joys of lattes and cappuccinos. And it's just so nice and so cozy. And like nothing really happens, but like in a really good way. And there's definitely a small fantasy plot in there. I wasn't too bothered about that. I was like, you know, I guess Travis Baldry knew there had to be some sort of plot, but I mostly just enjoyed like the heartwarming vibes and the comforting vibes and the fact that there wasn't like big stakes and like a heavy fantasy battle or war and I just thought that was really nice. There's also a succubus in this story. There's a little queer love storyline. There's this sort of magical mouse creature. I don't know. I just have to show you guys the 90s original cover art. It's not from the 90s just to be clear but like it gives me the 90s vibes. I'm just really happy I got to read this book and I think this is what mainly like made me go whoa I want to read a lot more of this genre because I really enjoy it and I think I've always sort of gravitated towards books similar like this but I've just never categorized them as cozy fantasy in my head because I didn't really realize this was a whole thing. I do definitely recommend if you start reading this book make sure you have a nice drink you need to have a latte present near you otherwise you'll go wild because you'll really want a latte because it's just so good and the same goes for pastries you need cinnamon rolls while reading this just trust me trust me on this one this is my last note on this but the audiobook is read by travis baldry who is an audiobook narrator by vocation it's his job and he's really really good so highly recommend the audiobook as well okay i think i'm just gonna like sort of switch up between books i've read and books i still want to read so the next one is one i have not read yet and it's so cute and tiny just look at this i remember i ordered this and it came like in a really small envelope and i was like wait is the book in there and then it was great times i don't know why i told you that so this is In the Company of Witches by Aura Lee Wallace it's an Evenfall Witches B&B &B mystery 
just the cover, like, look how cozy that is. So it says on the back, this is the perfect blend of mystery, magic, and mayhem. When a guest dies in the B&B, &B, she helps her aunt run. A young witch must rely on some good old-fashioned investigating to clear her aunt's name in this magical and charming new cozy mystery. So this officially falls under the cozy mystery genre, but I think especially when it's fantasy as well, you know, there's a lot of overlap there. But set in a sleepy New England town, there's a family of witches called the Warren Witches, and this lady dies at the inn, and one of the main characters, Aunt, Aunt Nora, is very suspect, and like everybody's suspecting her, and then Bryn, our main character, sets out to prove that her aunt had nothing to do with this, and she did not kill Constance. And one of the things I'm most excited about when it comes to this book is that Bryn is a witch who can communicate with ghosts and I'm really into ghost stories. I just really enjoy a good ghost story and like a main character who can talk to ghosts. I just think it's so fascinating and it's something I always really enjoy because it also tends to sort of blend like the past and the present, especially if they talk to like old timey ghosts. It's so much fun. I don't know why I like it that much. Um, I'm not sure if she's going to commune with old timey ghosts, but I do know that she can see ghosts. So really excited about this one. Then we're following up with one I have read. This is A Marvelous Light by Freya Marske. Do you have to say, I had a bit of mixed feelings about this one. In the beginning, I was super, 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 super into it. I enjoyed this so much. I was just like sort of surprised by how much I loved it. Started tabbing it like a maniac. But then as you can see, I sort of quit tabbing it. Um, and that's because I started enjoying it less. So I wasn't as like, I need to tab this sentence. I need to tab this bit. Um, I wasn't like that as much anymore. But I am definitely putting it on this list because it is a perfect cozy fantasy and it's very funny as well. This book does one of the things I enjoy most in fantasy, which is magical bureaucracy. <laughs> and I'm not entirely sure why I like that as much as I do, but I just think there's something so funny about combining such an everyday mundane stupid thing really, bureaucracy, what a horrible thing, and then combining that with something as wild and like magical as actual magic, it's just so good. So we follow Robin Blythe and his parents have just died, he's in a bit of a rough spot to be honest, he's trying to keep up the estate, trying to take care of his sister, and one of his parents' enemies actually sets him up with a job and it's like this sort of job for somebody they want out of the way. You know, it's like, oh, you go and do, do that. We don't care about that job. But then as Robin arrives at his first day for the job, it turns out he's going to be acting as a parliamentary liaison to a magical society. And it's this hidden society he didn't know about and he, you know, he gets involved. He also gets cursed accidentally along the way and then him and his partner, he's assigned to uh, Edwin Coercy, they have to try and lift the curse and his predecessor, who was the parliamentary liaison before him, has also gone mysteriously missing. Lots of things going on, lots of intrigue. This book is filled with like sort of them drinking tea and gallivanting around Victorian London. Wait, is it set in London or did I just sort of make that up? I feel like it is, but I'm not sure. Anyway, they go through like beautiful gardens, they go to tea parties, they do some boating out on a lake, they go to beautiful hidden bookstores and like secret passageways in the old house and it's just so much cozy vibes, really lovely. It's quite smutty as well, which kind of surprised me. The queer romance is lovely though, it's like very heartwarming. The thing with this book though is that the plot was intriguing as well, so I was involved with that as well, and the plot kind of fell flat for me. And I think if I'd gone more into it with the idea of I'm gonna enjoy these cozy vibes, then maybe I wouldn't be as bothered, but I still highly recommend it and I really enjoyed it. Next up on the list, I have literally three books by the same author, which is kind of silly, but I just feel like they all have to be mentioned. Um, I have only read one of them, or well, I'm currently reading one of them, but some of my friends have read the other ones and I'm just pretty sure they'd go really well on this list. And they are books I really want to read as well. So first we have A Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking by T. Kingfisher. T. Kingfisher is quickly becoming one of my new favorite authors, which I did not see coming. This story is about Mona, who lives in this big fantasy city with her aunt and she is sort of a, an apprentice in a bakery and in this world we have different people with magical powers and some of the folk have like sort of small magic um, and Mona as well. So what Mona can do is she can do magic with dough and so she's really helpful in a bakery, you know? She can do lots of things. She can like make gingerbread men come alive and grab things for her, stuff like that. But it's, it's small, it's tiny, it's like sort of domestic magic, I guess. And then one day a murder is committed in the bakery and they suspect Mona and Mona runs um, and she's being chased and there's also <laughs> 
<laughs> One of my favourite things in this book so far is that there's a sourdough starter called Bob, who Mona accidentally made come alive when she was a child and very stressed out. And she poured like all her magic into Bob. And so now Bob is this sort of a monster that lives in the basement and that is the sourdough starter. And it's just so funny. And I think that really encapsulates the energy of this book really well. It definitely feels like it's written for a bit of a younger audience here and there. So if you're, you have like problems with that, then maybe don't pick it up. But it's not like they're talking down to you. And I've just really, 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 really enjoyed this so far. I'm almost at the end of it and it's just, it's so cute and cozy and like bakery vibes and you know there's some really fun weird scenes with Mona's magic because it's such a random form of magic. Then the next two books from T. Kingfisher I wanted to talk about are books I have not read myself. So first we have Nettle and Bone which my best friend has recently read. She had like mixed opinions about it. She wasn't totally sure I believe whether she loved it or like it. I just think she liked it but it wasn't like a favourite thing. But one of the things that I really still remember about her talking about this book is that there's apparently like this sort of demon possessed chicken in it which just really got to me. I was like wow I'd love to read a book about a demon possessed chicken. <laughs> Let me read a bit of the blurb to you because this possessed chicken story is obviously getting you nowhere. After years of seeing her sisters suffer at the hands of an abusive prince, Mara, the shy convent raised third born daughter, has finally realised that no one is coming to their rescue. No one except for Mara herself. Seeking help from a powerful grave witch, Mara is offered the tools to kill a prince if she can complete three impossible tasks. Okay, definitely sounds like a fun fantasy plot. I'm just really excited to go and pick this up. I think I'm just gonna borrow it from my friend uh, or maybe listen to the audiobook because I've really enjoyed a lot of T. Kingfisher's work on audiobooks so far. I think especially when it comes to cozy fantasy, it really adds to the cozy vibe for me to be listening to it and then doing something cozy. Like, I don't know, like painting or having a nice cup of tea, you know, or like sort of doing a half nap where you half listen, half lay on the couch. <laughs> then this one is one I'm particularly very very excited about to finally go read it and that is Sword Hard by T. Kingfisher. This one just sounds so much fun and I think that's like the main thing with all of T. Kingfisher's work I've read so far. Even when it's horror, like even when it's scary, it's just fun, you know, and I love a good fun book that makes me feel happy inside. I think this book is set in the same world as Clockwork Boys by T. Kingfisher. I'm not as interested in that one, not sure why, but this one just really spoke to me. Hala is a housekeeper who has suddenly inherited her great uncle's estate and, unfortunately, his relatives. <laughs> Sarkis is an immortal swordsman trapped in a prison of enchanted steel. When Harla draws the sword that imprisons him, Sarkis finds himself attempting to defend his new wielder against everything from bandits and roving inquisitors to her own in-laws. And the sword itself may prove to be the greatest threat of all. I just think this one is going to be so fun and I don't have much more to say about it other than I really want to pick it up soon. By the way, if you've read any of the books that are on like my to still read list, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions about them in the comments down below. The next book, on my list is one of my favourite books of all time and it is not like your standard cosy fantasy but I still feel like it really fits the genre really well, the idea of it. And that of course is Lonely Castle in the Mirror by Mizuki Sujimura. I just feel like if a fairy tale book and a Studio Ghibli film had a child together it would be this book but then also with discussions of mental health. So the story is set in Tokyo and we follow a young girl who basically discovers that there's a door to another world in her mirror and I just love the whole door to another world thing and she's basically at home from school and every day when she's supposed to go to school she doesn't go to school because she's like struggling with bullying and mental health issues she goes through the mirror and into this big magical castle where there's other teenagers that are also from Tokyo that also don't go to school for each of their own respective reasons. In this castle they sort of get to do this challenge but they mostly just hang out and get to know each other and have these sort of interpersonal relationships and it's very coming of age. It discusses a lot of mental health and like typical teenage problems. It's really well done. It's a bit slow here and there. If you want to read something for like a grand plot, then don't pick this one up. But if you want to read something that has cozy vibes and that's just really magical and really sort of slow going, like, you know, like a nice creek. It's like sort of going. <laughs> It's just really lovely and wonderful. I read it over the summer, like during picnics, you know, sitting outside and it was just such a good time. Highly recommend. Then we have That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Demon by Kimberly Lemming. I think this is officially more sort of a cozy fantasy rom-com. I know it's a rom-com, but I still really wanted to mention it. This is one of those books I randomly found on Scribd. Um, that's an app I use to read. 
and I was like, mm, this is either going to be really fun and really good or like really, really bad. And then I looked it up on Goodreads and it has a 4.16 rating, which is really high. So I immediately put it on the like, I want to read this list. I'll read a little bit of the blurb to you. All I wanted to do was live my life in peace, maybe get a cat, expend my spice farm, really anything that doesn't involve going on a quest where an orc might rip my face off. But they say the goddess has favorites. If so, I'm clearly not one of them. After saving the demon Fallon in a wine drunk stupor, all he wanted to do was kill an evil witch enslaving his people. I mean, I get it, don't get me wrong, but he's dragging me along for the ride and I'm kind of peeved about it. On the bright side, he keeps burning off his shirt. <laughs> okay, this just sounds like everything I love. It sounds like a smutty, like a fun rom-com, but also a cozy fantasy romp and it just looks really fun. And the community ratings are so high, like everybody, loves this book so I really need to read it and if any of you have read it this is one I'm particularly interested about like whether you liked it so let me know. Honestly I'm starting to think that maybe the whole pile of books I have is too many books and I need to split up this video. <laughs> so another one that is high up my to read list is Love Potion by Cindy Paul and it was illustrated by Renee Zunnefeld. Their illustrations in here are really really pretty so I feel like it's very important that I also mention that. This is a queer love story about Blair, who's a witch. She's like this dark witch, but she's been secretly pining about this beautiful princess that lives across the road from her. Then one day the princess visits her magical herb shop and she's like, hey, I'm looking for a love potion. And that's what our romance and story starts. This book is a sort of twisted fairy tale. It's queer. It's supposedly very lovely. Like some of my friends that have read this said it was one of their favorites and they adored it because it was just like, everything they would have wanted, you know, in a fairy tale and a cute queer love story. And the illustrations are stunning. It's also got this like sort of silver foiling going on. It's just such a pretty book and I'm so excited to read it. It also looks very like grumpy ex sunshine, like sort of like this gothic witch and this cottage core stunning princess. And I just, oh my God, I can't wait to read this. So excited about this one. And next up on my list is one of the series I've really enjoyed last year. I've started reading it last year and I am still continuing it into this year and that is Charmed Life by Diana Wayne Jones and this is the Crestomancy series. I feel like I could have also put Howl's Moving Castle on this list but that is one that I've talked about so much already. I feel like you know we know by now but if you haven't read Howl's Moving Castle it's also really good. The story follows Kat and Kat has a magical sister and honestly she's a bitch. <laughs> Kat loves her a lot, but I hated this character. I thought she was the worst. I think she's called Gwendolyn. They live with this old lady in this weird town and one day they get swept up because Gwendolyn is a magical witch and they get sort of taken to this castle where there's also other children and there's this really eccentric weird wizard that's going to teach them magic. And supposedly first we think that only Gwendolyn is going to learn magic, but they think Kat also has magic. But Kat is like, wait, no, it's just Gwendolyn. I can't do this. So it's this, this really fun romp of him trying to, you know, get along in class and also making new friends and accidentally doing magic and it's just so cute and so fun and so cozy. Such a fun middle grade. The audiobooks are spectacular as well. They're read by this man with a really nice deep voice and I love that in audiobooks. I think it adds to the cozy feel so mm, love this. Can't wait to read on in the series. I think each book is a different story though so I don't think we'll be following the same characters which is really unfortunate. I've said it a thousand times but I'm also really 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 excited about this one so the next one on my list I really want to read is Can't Spell Treason Without Tea by Rebecca Thorne. I feel like I should order this like right now. Like I should have ordered it yesterday to be honest so I could be reading it right now but I didn't so you know. So this is out of the Tomes and Tea Cozy Fantasies series and it's book one so I'm beyond excited that there's going to be multiple books. All Raina and Kiantha want to do is open a bookshop that serves tea. Save! <laughs> Worn wooden floors, plants on every table, firelight drifting between the rafters, all complemented by love and good company. Thing is, Raina works as one of the Queen's private guards and Kiantha is the most powerful mage in existence. Leaving their lives isn't so easy. Oh, it just sounds so good. It sounds like the love child of Legends and Lattes and some of the other books on this and I just oh I'm so excited and the cover looks so cute. Oh I want to live in this cozy bookshop. This is very irrelevant and nobody asked for this but the thing I always do when I read cozy fantasy is I put on like this sort of ASMR ambient cozy bookstores or like a fantasy tavern ASMR ambience and it's just it really makes for the best reading experience trust me you should try it if you haven't and some of these videos have stunning graphics. I love love doing that. Okay this is my final book on this list and this this is more sort of like a cozy sci-fi to be honest but you know I'm still putting it on the list. Um, this is A Psalm for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers. 
also a book that has been going around the booktubes lately. It's about a man who becomes a tea monk, which is basically this sort of monk that people come to to drink tea when they're upset. <laughs> it's just, it's such a cute idea. And he goes off into the woods because he's sort of having like a life crisis, to be honest. And he goes off into the woods and he runs into a robot. And robots have sort of had an uprising in this world. So they used to be factory line workers. Then the robots sort of came alive and rebelled and they've sort of started their own society now. There's been this rift between humans and robots. And so this is the story of sort of that tea monk having a crisis and that robot who wants to know more about humans because he's obsessed with humans. He thinks they're so interesting. And they are sort of basically talking to each other about life and like life philosophies and it's just so weird, but so fun and so well done. And I love Becky Chambers. Like a lot of the time, nothing really goes on in her books, but I'm really into it. Um, it's a novella. It was really short. So if you're not into novellas, then maybe don't pick this one up because, you know, it's obviously built sort of different than a regular book because there's less time. But I thought it was amazing and so cozy and like, especially some of the descriptions of where they are are stunning and really give you all the cozy vibes. Okay, those were most of the books on my list. There's still a couple more, but I feel like this video is plenty long as it is. Okay, so those were all of the cozy fantasy book recommendations and cozy fantasy books that are still on my list that I really want to read. I I really hope this was a helpful video and you guys got some wonderful recommendations out of it. Let me know in the comments down below what is your favourite cosy fantasy book if you have any. And other than that, I hope you have a lovely day. Thank you so much for being here on my channel. Don't forget to subscribe, like and leave a comment letting me know what you thought of the video. I always feel like such an influencer when I say that. And yeah, I hope you have a lovely day and that I'll see you next time in my next video. Bye!